Good morning, everybody. I hope everybody is doing good. Children, only and only if there is an emergency, please move out of the house. Situation is getting a little chronic. Uh, take care of yourself. You are the most important, most precious people on this earth. So do take care of yourselves, children. So today we are going to begin with the second chapter of NCRT of Indian Economic Development, which is Indian economy. During the reform period, 1950s to 1990. If you remember, in the first chapter we studied what was the Indian economic scenario prior to independence under the British rule during the colonial period, on the eve of independence, how Britishers were controlling us. In the second chapter, we are going to understand the moment we got free in 1947, and we had our constitution laid down in 1950. How did India progress, being an independent country, up to 1990s? There were a lot of problems that we faced in the late 80s, because of which we had to have major reforms in 1990. Like uh, in 2020, the government has made a lot of reforms. The 20 lakh crore, uh, you know, announcement made by the Modi government is again a reform period during the COVID. Maybe. Uh, Five, seven, ten years from now, we may have that in our economics books also. So, in this particular chapter, uh, I'm going to introduce the chapter to you first, and then move on to explaining to you in phases. So, probably we'll be making about four to five videos in this chapter because I want you to do the chapter in detail. I'm going to introduce the chapter first to you, telling you what are the different type of economies which prevail in the world. Then we're going to move on understanding when India got free. What were the four major goals India had set, uh, you know, to achieve some targets? Then we are going to see what were the major reforms introduced by the government in the agricultural sector, in the industrial sector. We are going to move ahead in understanding why did India adopt a very different uh, trade policy. We had something called the import substitution policy, right? We are going to understand that. Then we are going to review in detail. the reform period how what were the drawbacks what were the positive things that we uh, faced during 1950 from 1950s to 1990s we need to understand what is an economic system children you all are very well aware of what is an economy you know what is economics you know in an economy there has to be a system a system wherein whatever is done in that particular system in that economy it is for the benefit welfare of the uh, you know people in all for everybody at a macro level it is not just for one individual or the few poor or the very few rich no in an economic system you need to take care of everybody you need to promote everybody's welfare so jawaharlal nehru was always of the opinion that there should be a socialistic economy but then he was not always very very favor of it right he was not in favor of only a socialist economy because when you have a socialist economy then you are only only under the public sector he always believed that both should play an important role the uh, government should play a very dominant role bringing about a socialist economy whereas the private sector also should be introduced why because we are in a democracy india just got free when india got free everybody wanted to play a very important role so unhone socialistic pattern ko mind mein rakh kar public sector ko bahut importance di lekin unhone private sector ya private property ya democracy ko ignore nahi kiya they introduced they helped the private sector also to be a part of the economy chale normally every economy there are three types of systems in any economy the very first system in an economy is the capitalist economy jisko hum kehte hain capitalistic society capitalist economy uh, ya uh, you know economic system isme kya hota hai it is basically the private sector which plays a very very dominant role right yeah most of the decisions are taken by the private sector it is it is governed by the market forces called demand and supply children each and everything i speak is only from the ncrt it it is very well explained i'm telling it to you like a story right so in a in a capitalist economy it is normally the market forces the demand and supply jitna jyada private sector ko lagega yes ye product demand mein wo wohi produce karega and but obviously they'll sell it at a high price yahan ek drawback ye hai that normally 
the consumers are exploited only those who have purchasing power are ready to pay off you know ready to foot the bill and they're ready to buy anything so this doesn't work usa and all developed economies are capitalist economies then the second type of an economic system we have is a socialistic society what is a socialistic society it is normally dominated by the government it is a government who decides what to produce how to produce and for whom to produce it basically keeps in mind the needs wants of the society is where everything is state owned you know everything is state owned ye jo socialist economies hai unke unko lagta hai ki bahut acha hai kyunki wahan koi you know say nahi hai domination badi hai then you have another economy which is the mixed economy and most of the economies in the world are the mixed economies here the government sector and the private sector work together in partnership the major roles you know in 1950s when we had the constitution laid down undoubtedly the government gave a lot of importance to the public sector to the government sector kyunki us time government sector hi ye sab kuch kar sakte the unke paas paisa tha i'm going to teach a little later on right so it is basically the government sector which takes care of all the key decisions but it also encourages the private sector to be a part of it 2020 march board question one mark define a mixed economy so children in 1947 when we got independent under the leadership of pandit jawaharlal nehru he encouraged both the private sector as well as the public sector now we had these are all one marker questions we had the industrial policy resolution first time passed in 1948 and in 1950 the planning commission was set up under the leadership of the prime minister the first prime minister and he was a chairperson of that particular planning commission the plans decided and the planning commission had a tenure of 5 years normally 5 years agar koi problem aate hai koi emergency hoti hai then the plan is shorter if the plan is shorter so children in 1947 when we got independent under the leadership of pandit jawaharlal nehru he encouraged both the private sector as well as the public sector now we had these are all one marker questions we had the industrial policy resolution first time passed in 1948 and in 1950 the planning commission was set up under the leadership of the prime minister the first prime minister and he was a chairperson of that particular planning commission the plans decided and the planning commission had a tenure of 5 years normally 5 Okay, children. Now you've understood uh, when we got independent and what happened. Now, what happened actually was in the planning commission, they started to have plans, five-year plans. We need to understand what is a plan, and why was there a need for India to adopt planning? Children, I'm asking you questions. I'm telling you, you need to make a note of those questions and write them down. They are all questions in between, right? Now. What was the plan, and why was there a need to frame a plan? Why were they essential? First of all, you are all business study students. You will you will have studied planning. Planning is basically for the future. You've done the chapter even government budget. Every thing is future के लिए estimated होती है. So whenever we talk about a plan, plan is nothing but planning, deciding in future as to how we are going to put you put to use the economy's resources. You very well know how are the resources scarce in nature. they have alternative uses so the country should have some general goals general goals hote hain for a very long period of time unemployment kaise hatani hai population kaise control karni hai ye sare general goals hain and then some specific goals jo usi 5 saal ke andar humne pure karne hain the specific goals normally merge with the general goals these specific goals change with time depending upon the priority of the Uh, you know system priority of the country's stage of development these goals will change if you look at as on today keeping covid situation in mind i'm sure whenever the government plans in future the five year planning jab bhi sarkar karegi in the normal terms sabse uh, importance or sabse jyada priority wo health sector ko degi right so goals change specific goals change now why was there a need for planning very much here there was a need to plan because the plans mentioned the goals very clearly there were very there were four very important major goals in 1950s which the government had to take care of the goals were one growth modernization 
सेल्फ रिलायंस एंड इक्विटी चार गोल्स थे ये चारों के चारों इंपॉर्टेंट थे लेकिन चारों के चारों एक टाइम नहीं अचीव हो सकते थे बिकॉज द कंट्री हैड वेरी लिमिटेड रिसोर्सेज द गवर्नमेंट हैड टू मेक अ चॉइस ये हमने माइक्रो में भी किया द गवर्नमेंट हैड टू मेक अ चॉइस गवर्नमेंट को लगना था कि जो सबसे ज्यादा इंपॉर्टेंट है उस सेक्ट उस गोल को प्रायोरिटी देनी चाहिए जब वो चीज अचीव हो जाएगी देन द गवर्नमेंट वुड मूव ऑन टू द नेक्स्ट गोल Let us understand each of these goals individually, and why were they important, and why did the government only choose these four important goals? First of all, growth. Children, growth is very important for any economy, and especially that economy which was dependent, which was under the you know clutches of the uh, you know the British rule. So growth. ग्रोथ कैसे होगी द कंट्री हैड टू इंक्रीज द कैपेसिटी ऑफ द कंट्री टू प्रोड्यूस गुड्स एंड सर्विसेज इसके लिए द गवर्नमेंट वांटेड द इकोनॉमी नीड्स अ ह्यूज अमाउंट ऑफ प्रोडक्टिव कैपिटल द गवर्नमेंट नीड्स अ लॉट ऑफ सपोर्टिंग सर्विसेज लाइक ट्रांसपोर्टेशन यू नो योर बैंकिंग सिस्टम सारे ऑक्सिलरी सर्विसेज एंड द गवर्नमेंट शुड बी इन अ पोजिशन टू इंक्रीज नॉट ओनली द कैपिटल बट द एफिशियंसी ऑफ द कैपिटल ऑल्सो एंड सबसे अच्छा तरीका ये पता करने के लिए कि ग्रोथ है कि नहीं द बेस्ट थिंग इज दैट देर इज यू नो यू हैव एन इकोनॉमिक इंडिकेटर कॉल जीडीपी देखो फिर आगे एक नंबर का क्वेश्चन व्हाट इज द इकोनॉमिक इंडिकेटर ऑफ द इकोनॉमी जीडीपी तो भाई जीडीपी का जीडीपी का डेफिनेशन में आ सकता है व्हाट इज जीडीपी वी ऑल वेरी नो वी ऑलरेडी रन मैक्रो इट इज अ मार्केट वैल्यू ऑफ गुड्स एंड सर्विसेज प्रोड्यूस इन अ कंट्री इन अ पीरियड ऑफ टाइम चिल्ड्रन We have three sectors. Is it necessary that all the three sectors will contribute to the increase in GDP? Perhaps not. So it was very important to produce goods and services in the very first five-year plans, so that everybody could enjoy a very rich and varied life. Now there are three sectors, as I've already told you: the agriculture sector, the industrial sector, and the service sector. In three, the contribution is. to the total gdp us contribution ko hum kehte hain structural composition usko hum sectorial composition bhi kehte hain kya kehte hain sectorial composition ya structural composition it was observed 1950s ke aas pass jab ye sab kuch hona shuru hua that the agriculture sector was contributing the maximum to the gdp growth rate of the economy right but and uh, in some of the countries the service sector was also contributing टू मच टू द जी डी पी बट अगर हमने इंडिया को देखना है तो इंडिया के हिसाब से द लार्जेस्ट सेक्टर विच वॉज कॉन्ट्रीब्यूटिंग टू द जी डी पी एट द टाइम ऑफ इंडिपेंडेंस वॉज एग्रीकल्चर द सेकेंड गोल द कंट्री सेट फॉर इट्स फाइव ईयर प्लान वॉज मॉडर्नाइजेशन सी ग्रोथ तो चाहिए जी डी पी बढ़ना चाहिए प्रोडक्शन बढ़नी चाहिए कैपिटल बढ़ना चाहिए गुड्स प्रोड्यूस होना सब कुछ होना चाहिए तीनों सेक्टर्स शुड कॉन्ट्रीब्यूट टू द मैक्सिमम बट मॉडर्नाइजेशन इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट मॉडर्नाइजेशन से फायदा क्या होता है यू आर एबल टू इंक्रीज द प्रोडक्शन एंड एफिशियंसी ऑफ गुड्स एंड सर्विसेस ऑफ द कैपिटल लेट मी कहली चिल्ड्रन देर आर टू टाइप्स ऑफ मॉडर्नाइजेशन दिस आई वुड लाइक दिस द स्कोप ऑफ मॉडर्नाइजेशन इज इन टू वेज वन यू कैन हैव टेक्निकल मॉडर्नाइजेशन या टेक्नोलॉजिकल मॉडर्नाइजेशन ये वर्ड भी कह सकते हैं टेक्नोलॉजिकल मॉडर्नाइजेशन एंड द सेकेंड इज सोशल मॉडर्नाइजेशन वट इज टेक्नोलॉजिकल मॉडर्नाइजेशन सबको पता है आजकल की डेट में देखो वी आर ऑल टेक्नोलॉजिकली मॉडर्न इन नाइनटीन फिफ्टीज ऑल्सो द गवर्नमेंट वॉन्टेड टू एडॉप्ट टेक्नोलॉजी टेक्नोलॉजी बोथ इन द एग्रीकल्चर सेक्टर एंड द मैन्युफैक्चरिंग सेक्टर एग्रीकल्चर सेक्टर दे वॉन्टेड टू इंट्रोड्यूस ग्रीन रेवल्यूशन हाई हिल वाइटी ऑफ सीड्स दे वॉन्टेड टू इंट्रोड्यूस इरीगेशनल फेसिलिटीज technology to you know sow the seeds and harvest karne ke liye uh, factories mein service uh, uh, secondary sector mein machine ki zarurat thi so modernization by way of technology see children khali modernization by technology is not enough tumhare paas sab kuch ho sakta hai achhi machine ho sakti hai achhi technology ho sakti hai har cheez hai but social outlook is very important the government wanted people to change their social outlook they wanted the society to become modern along with using technology kaise they wanted to give equal rights to the women like the men they wanted to shun the traditional economy society they didn't want women to be considered only as the people to stay at home they wanted women to equally participate in the society 
in the terms of earning uh, livelihood they wanted women to so showcase their talent in places like banks factories schools etc logon ki soch bhi badalni chahiye unko lagta tha ki agar logon ki soch towards women also changes and women also contribute to the economy then definitely the country is going to be very progressive prosperous a very important and uh, justified a goal set by the government in 1950 first five year plan that was self reliance 2020 march question paper mein self reliance why was self reliance adopted as a goal aaya tha now what is self reliance being by yourself trying to work for yourself apna bhala karna apne resources ko multiply karna khali economic growth khali modernization is not enough you need to make sure that you are using your own resources rather than importing the goods from abroad the first five year first seven five year plans means how many years 5 into 7 35 years importance was given only to self reliance self reliance matlab atmanirbhar hona not trying to import goods which we can otherwise try to produce them within the country so in india wanted to be self reliant very importantly why because india was in the clutches of the britishers they were dependent on some other economy they were dependent for essential commodities like food also foreign countries you know the wheat was coming from us these were the problems we were facing aur maan lo ki tum kisi par dependent hote ho kisi aur country par dependent hote ho wo country tumhe apne isharon par nachayegi and that is why they wanted to be free from foreign domination they wanted to be self reliant they did they they always feared that agar abhi bhi hum dependent rahenge on essential goods like food supplies technology capital then we will be always vulnerable in the hands of the foreigners foreign interference will always prevail in our economy wo nahi chahte the ki hamare upar koi bhi havi ho and that is why jab india free hua sabse pehle unhone objective banaya goal banaya for many years that we are going to be self reliant and believe me we are self reliant the next goal set by the government was equity i think aaj tak hum yahi goal apna rahe hain equity we can have economic development with growth with modernization and self reliance no doubt our conditions will improve we will have a better living but this is not enough khali growth gdp badh jaye modernization ho jaye self reliant ho jaye is not enough when a country is progressing when the country has high growth when the country is a very modern developed sophisticated country when the country is trying to produce the goods within its country using its own resources and not bringing the goods from outside or not being dependent on outside it is also very very important that the economy should make sure that all these facilities should be provided even to the people at the lower end all this should trickle down to all this trickle should trickle down to the people who are living in poverty people who are in the poor sections of the society every see things should not be only enjoyed by the upper section by the rich the elite the upper middle class jab economic growth ho rahi hai to the poor should also be uplifted jab development ho rahi hai modernization ho rahi hai to gareebon ko bhi is par haq hai so that is why this particular goal of equity was incorporated it was along with growth modernization and self reliance it was believed that every indian should be able to meet their basic needs of food clothing a decent house chhat hone chahiye ghar par education good healthcare facilities and there should be no inequality in the distribution of wealth and income everybody should be a part and parcel of the benefits of economic development modernization and self reliance in a country so this was another goal which was emphasized by the uh, you know government in its first five year plan a quick recap of what we did children we have studied right from the beginning this is all in ncert uh, the book is very well marked we studied what is an economic system 
we studied there are three economic systems the capitalist economy the socialist economy and the mixed economy then i told you uh, the planning commission was set up in the planning commission plans were made we studied what is a plan and then why were why were plans essentially made right plans were made to set goals in the five year plans there were four very important goals set by the government depending upon the priorities first was the growth in an economy second was the um, modern economy both in terms of technology as well as uh, technology as well as social outlook the third was self reliance not to be dependent on uh, any foreign uh, interference and government and the fifth and the last goal set was equality equity equity means the benefits of social development should trickle down to every individual in the economy every indian should be able to meet her basic needs of food clothing shelter uh, education health and the inequality between rich and poor should be 